On this week's episode of Conestoga Connected, Sean Emery of KW Eats heads to Barry's Asparagus, an asparagus farm located in Cambridge. In the Doghouse switches it up this week as we check out a cat named Finnegan. And our newest segment, Driven, follows Madison Fisher, Canada's top female rock climber. All this and more coming up on Conestoga Connected. Ah, oh, I just love the smell of Conestoga in the morning. Oh hey, didn't see you there. Welcome to Conestoga Connected. I'm your host, Brandon Guitar. We've got an awesome show lined up for you today. You're not going to want to miss a second of what's in store. Sometimes it's nice to have a, a trip right here in your backyard. That's why this week, the girls from Road Trip didn't stray too far from KW, checking out a nice loop-style walking trail, completely surrounded by water. Let's take a look. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Road Trip. I'm your host, Jessica, and today we're in Drynan Regional Forest. Today we're gonna be hiking the 3.3 kilometer walk. So let's go see what it has to offer. Drynan Regional Forest offers a 3.4 kilometer moderately traffic loop trail located near Waterloo, Ontario. It features a lake and is rated as moderate in terms of walking difficulty. The trail offers a number of activities and is accessible year round. Visitors may enjoy walking, camping, picnics, swimming, and family fun. Um, I like the fact that it's pretty isolated. Um, especially now with COVID, it's great. I mean, not a lot of people, but the dogs. People are here a lot with their dogs, taking them on walks, and yeah, it's been great, so. Hi! Come here! Upon arrival, you will often see visitors walking their dogs and enjoying the view. And there's a lot of them. I think I've seen three different people today with their dogs, so the water is always nice. Although the main walking trail is only 3.4 kilometers, the forest itself is actually 44.8 hectares. Many animals call Drynan home as well, including the ribbon snake and the blue spotted salamander. we've made it to the end of our episode. That trail was definitely intermediate level due to its distance. 3.3 kilometers is a lot for somebody with physical ailments, so if you do have a walking or mobility issue, I do recommend a shorter trail. But the sights were definitely worth it. Thank you. You've heard of the question, what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? Well, I've been wondering, what came first, Master of Two Wheels or Two Wheels Motorsports? Let's head with our host, Faisal Khan of Master of Two Wheels, and to Guelph to check out some exotic bikes and to answer that faithful question. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the last episode of Masters of Two Wheel. I'm your host, Faisal Khan. Today, I'm here at Guelph Two Wheel Motorsport, and let's see what they have got inside. event Nadina is hoping for a big change. Hi my name is Ron Ashley from Tua Motorsport in Guelph, Ontario. We're the local Kawasaki, Can-Am, Ski-Doo and uh, Suzuki dealer here in Guelph. Um, quite the amazing year for uh, during COVID. Sales are up, to, up approximately 30 to 40 percent in those aspects of our business, so it, it's uh, been quite impressive. Although our uh, street bike lineup from Kawasaki, Suzuki, Yamaha, all that street bike stuff that for our local street riders uh, has been down a little bit. There's no uh, licensed schooling facilities open, so they're, we're missing that market. Uh, 
demand has been uh, exceeded by the uh, the inventory levels, and we just uh, we're doing our best to keep up. Due to a massive rally set for August 2021, in which 200,000 people are expected. Till then, ride safe. See you in the next episode. It's no surprise that COVID-19 has negatively affected the businesses in our area. It's also rem important to remember that COVID-19 has also affected our students in their work and studies. Let's follow Sagar Asher to Waterloo to see how they're coping with COVID. Hello and welcome back on Currently Coping with COVID-19. I'm your host, Sagar Asher. Till now, our segment has tapped many stories on businesses getting affected due to COVID-19. There's more to it. Students too have been majorly affected by the COVID-19 wave. We have with us today international students studying at Conestoga College to share some light on it. COVID-19 has uh, affected a lot uh, in finding a field job because I think everything is work from home. So companies are preferring their old employees the employees that have a background about what they do and how things process in the company. It's going to be uh, time consuming for them as they would have to train us for that. And right now, because of COVID, they don't want to take the risk of meeting someone or also wasting time online in Zoom meetings and such things. Students' mental health has taken a toll due to COVID-19. They are finding it difficult to get jobs after graduation. Companies presently are not preferring to hire freshers and trainees. The main problem I faced after COVID is difficulty in finding a good part-time job. Especially after all the lockdowns and such problem, it has been really difficult for me to go out and look for the job in person. The shops or stores where I would like to work are solely relying on current employees and not likely to hire a newcomer like me. Even after finding a good job, it is much to get COVID test done before joining. This COVID test may take long and resulting in one losing the job itself. It is surely a difficult time for students to make their ends meet, especially around COVID-19. For Kanistoga Connected, this is Sagar Ashur. I've been trying to remember what my favorite vegetable was as a kid. You know, asparagus actually got me through some pretty tough times. Speaking of that, Sean Emery of KW Eats is a Bears Asparagus, an asparagus farm in Cambridge. Let's check it out. Hi everybody, it's Sean Emery. Welcome back to another episode of KW Eats. This week we're at Barry's Asparagus in Cambridge, Ontario. Let's go inside and see what their country market has to offer. Founded in 1892, Cedardale Farm has been passed down through generations of one family. Today, Tim Barry runs Barry's Asparagus from the same farm as his great-grandfather used to own. My grandpa had 100 acres of asparagus in Alliston. He was the largest grower at the time and was continuously trying to sway my dad into trying asparagus. So finally my dad tried it and realized that people really wanted fresh local asparagus so he, he kept expanding every year and to the point where everything we produced was always being sold. So then when I bought the farm we took it one step farther and started having a value-added asparagus products so we, that's why you can see we have asparagus chips, and asparagus salsa, asparagus soap, asparagus pasta. We just anything that there's a fit we try and use every sphere of asparagus we produce into our products. Wow guys, I didn't know how many products you could incorporate asparagus into. Please be sure to pop in the Berry's Asparagus Farm or keep your eyes open for their products at your local grocery stores. Thanks for watching, I'm Sean Emery. It's time to tune in and pump up the music as that dream job gets a royal serenade from a toe-tapping, head-banging, body-rocking music producer. Here in Guelph, we're going to talk to music producer Tyson Brennecom and find out how he landed that dream job. Tyson Brennecom is a music producer from Guelph and pursued music industry arts from Fanshawe College.
How did you land your dream job? Well, I, uh, I grew up in the Windsor area playing in bands throughout high school and um, decided I'd move to London and uh, go to Fanshawe College and was lucky enough to get into the music, uh, music industry arts program and uh, just kept making contacts through there and um, decided to just follow my heart and uh, do what, what I thought best amplified my voice in this world. And, um, brought as many people as, as I could into that uh, dream with me and have been making music since. Are you ready for the rapid fire round? I'm ready for the rapid fire round. Let's go. First question, what is velocity? Velocity is uh, the relative loudness of a sound compared to the other sounds around it. Next question, what guitarist is famous for a guitar named The Red Special? Oh, that's Brian May from Queen. Right. Next question, what's a Moog synthesizer? Uh, it was the first commercially produced uh, electronic instrument to be called a synthesizer. Good. Here's what I learned. To get that dream job, it takes passion, commitment to learn, and being open to opportunities, because you never know what's in store for you. So what are you waiting for? Go get that dream job. We've met so many dogs this year on Console and Connected, thanks to our show, Inside the Dog House. Why not switch it up as we meet a cat named Finnegan and her owner, Kira Publicover. Hi, my name is Kira Publicover and I am the owner of Finnegan. Finnegan is a really quirky cat. He has a lot of energy. He's pretty sweet when he wants to be, but yeah, I would say he's a, he's a pretty quirky guy. There have been so many struggles. He, he's a really nervous cat uh, and has a lot of cat anxiety. So when we first got him, the, one of the big struggles was making sure that he felt comfortable in his house and that he was like adjusting well. He is not a typical cat. He does not like to be pet. He doesn't He's not at all the cat that I thought I would get. So adjusting my expectations to his personality was a good, was a good uh, challenge, but he's fantastic when he wants to be. When, whenever he wakes up, I wake up, uh, he'll bring me downstairs for breakfast, giving him, giving him his food, um, cleaning out his litter box. Uh, advice I'd give to a first time cat owner, make sure that you're putting the cat's needs first. Like, don't dress it up in a little cute outfit if it doesn't want to be. <laughs> Plan for the worst. Um, <laughs> the best part of owning a cat is that you get a built-in best friend. You, you know, somebody who runs to the front door when you come home and will snuggle up in your legs at night. Our next show, called Driven, features Madison Fisher, one of Canada's top female rock climbers. Let's get a mindset and to see, see what it's like for one of Canada's best athletes and see the mind inside of someone who's truly driven. Winners in climbing competitions are people who hold on longer. It's people who go for big moves and actually land them and stick them and hold on longer than other people would normally. It's just about that extra level of grit that they bring to competitions. The deliberate practice is a large part of my training. Um, I'd say that's when my training really became serious, is when I took climbing sessions and I turned them into deliberate sessions. So I don't just go to the gym and climb whatever I see. I don't just get on the new stuff and hang out with friends. Instead, I'm always seeking out things that I'm bad at. Um, I'm always making up moves that I'll see at competitions, and my climbing sessions are no longer just, you know, on the fly. I always have a plan. I can tell you what I'm going to do in a month from now or two years from now um, in terms of my climbing sessions. So deliberate practice is the most important thing I can bring to a climbing session. The biggest takeaway I have from being a professional rock climber is my confidence. Um, there's so many things about myself that I really like now. Um, like I'm strong and I'm, 
uh, resilient, I've got grit, and there's just so many really awesome qualities that I can now walk into any room in any situation, whether I'm, you know, gonna go play chess or I'm gonna, you know, try out a new sport or something. I'm so confident that I have the skills to either do it well the first time or work on it until I am good at it. Well, that's all for this episode, for the first half anyways, of Conestoga Connected. But don't touch that remote. Cam McKenzie and the entire rest of the second half of our show will be with you shortly. Thanks so much, and remember to stay safe and stay connected. Coming up on this week's episode of Conestoga Connected, Dana Schaffner heads to Conestoga River Horseback Adventures to take a look at why connecting with animals is something she doesn't take for granted. Get ready to sing your hearts out when A. Kova Getaway heads to this celebrity's beautiful hometown. And Hidden Worlds decides to switch it up and create a constantly connected themed geocache. All this and so much more coming up on Consto Connected. Welcome back to Consto Connected. I'm of course your host, Cam McKenzie, and I'll be guiding you through the second half of the show this evening. Get ready to cry, laugh, and maybe even sing with this action-packed lineup. But first, Dana Schaffner heads over to a farm that was very important in her upbringing to learn about why bonding with animals is important not only for the animals, but for us as well. Let's see what you got, Dana. Agriculture has been an important part of my life for over 10 years, and this week we are traveling to where I got my start in the world of farming. While visiting with some old animal friends, I had the chance to speak with the owner, Tatiana Van Lent, who explained why her horses are not pets, but rather co-workers. The horses definitely are an impact on how we can run our business. We would not be able to run our business without the um, dependence of how important the horses are um, because we have horses that have been here longer than me and that they offer the stability and the consistency of the best customer service reps that uh, the industry could offer. One of the many horses we got to visit was Peanut a large draft horse who loves belly scratches and who is one of my favorite horses as a child. Like all animals, it is hard to pick a favorite thing about the horses. There, I think there was Brock Brennerman, Buck Brennerman that had said, um, we as humans always are feeling that we need to fulfill ourselves because we have a part of us missing. And that uh, equine people just self-medicate because they know what will fill that void. Um, and that having animals in your life changes your life. It refocuses your life to see the value of life and to understand the importance of stewardship and responsibility and continuity and grit. To end off the visit, I was able to brush Nanaimo, another familiar horse. For Conestoga Connected in the Haystack, I'm Dana Schaffner. This week, Restaurant Diaries decided to take a bite into a local hotspot when they went over to the Royal Indian Buffet. Also, they saw how the current COVID safety measures were affecting the business. Let's see what you got, Dewani. Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Restaurant Diaries. I'm your host, Dewani Gajar, with Panasupa Connected. Today, we are here at the Royal Indian Buffet and Suites in Cambridge. It is located on the Hessler Road. It is very famous among the local Indians and they are very famous for its sweets. Let's check it out. They have beautiful interiors decked with authentic Punjabi elements to give you ambience along with the food. As you can uh, see in the name Royal Indian Buffet, we are uh, well known for our buffet. It's only for like $12, $12 and you can eat a lot, as much as you want. They have a huge range 
of vegetarian and non-vegetarian dishes for a nominal price. They also have a lot of variety of authentic sweets. They were famous for their buffet, but currently they are only providing delivery or takeout. A lot of phone calls come uh, regarding dine-in, but unfortunately I have to say no to them that our dine-in is closed. Because of COVID, uh, they put uh, this area in red zone, so we can't take dine-in, so we mostly focus on uh, takeouts. Not just in the way they serve food, they also had to make changes in their kitchen because of pandemic. There used to be around 10 people working in the kitchen, but now it's just three or four people that work in the kitchen. Yep, uh, most of the staff is laid off because of COVID. All their food and sweets are really delicious. And they truly make sure about your safety during this pandemic. So next time you feel like having Indian food, you'll know just the place. There are a lot of famous Canadian artists, but you may not know that this singer grew up not too far from Kitchener-Waterloo. This week, a COVID getaway heads to Stratford to check out the Justin Bieber Museum. What do you think of when you hear the word Stratford? Well, a lot of people generally think one of two things. They think the theater, or more commonly, their first thought goes to Justin Bieber. Well, there is more than that to just Stratford. This location specifically, this museum has been around one form or another since 1920, but it's been in a whole variety of places. It, you know, the collection was in the Stratford Library for a while, it was in a factory for a while. Then in 2009, the museum board, this property became available. Uh, they purchased it, we put a 10,000 square foot addition on the museum, and it's really become a home for the museum. And, uh, you know, we've taken great advantage of the trail system here. It's really become a really nice home for us. Not just to house and show the artifacts, but also to present uh, concerts. Uh, we do weddings on the property. So the, the property itself has become a real asset of the museum as well. I was glad that John was able to share so much insight on the exhibits here and how the museum itself is actually different from any others. Well, the Justin Bieber exhibit is certainly our most popular. We, you know, our Stratford Festival exhibit, and we always have an exhibit attached to the Stratford Festival during that year. For example, we had Shakespeare's First Folio one year. We had the Anne Frank House exhibit one year. So we always have a festival exhibit, but far and away, month over month, the Justin Bieber exhibit is, is easily the most popular exhibit now or probably at any time in this museum's history. Once you step outside the museum to explore the city, you will find a beautiful park with Lake Victoria, teeming with life and picturesque scenery that makes for a beautiful walk on a sunny day. Full of history of all kinds, Stratford is a place you definitely want to put on your list to visit. Thank you for joining me on my adventure to Stratford. For a COVID getaway, I'm Jenny Cupa. Everyone knows that income is one of the most important parts of your life. This week, Project North talked to someone all the way from Ecuador who moved all the way to Canada for their job, not only for themselves, but for their family as well. A dedicated mind can accomplish seemingly impossible tasks. Giselle from Ecuador is a perfect example of this. My name is Giselle. I came to Canada on October 25th, 2006, and I came here as uh, for a job opportunity that I was offered uh, to work as a waitress. Uh, back in 2010, I, I uh, got a diploma in business administration, uh, and then um, I moved uh, to Mississauga and then to Cambridge over here, and then I opened up my cleaning business. So right now my partner and I, we work with many property managers. It's very challenging not to have my family over here. I am by myself, and my partner and my children. The, it's a huge challenge to be a mother of four kids and then uh, having to work. So when I was back in, in Ecuador, I used to work as a model in a TV uh, show. And over there, we used to interact with a lot of people from Europe and they all used to speak English. So that's how I kind of learned English. 
Giselle tells me that anytime she goes back to Ecuador, that she always gets requests for fried plantains, or patacones as they're called. First, slice up a few plantains while you heat up some oil in a medium saucepan. Carefully put the sliced plantains in until slightly soft, just soft enough so we can remove them, press them, prep them in a bowl of warm water and salt, before putting them back in the oil until golden and crispy. Serve with some slices of cheese on top and a cup of coffee, some friends for good measure, and you have a savory, delicious treat for everyone to enjoy. Giselle shows how hard work can pay off and what it means to stay strong in the face of every challenge life throws our way. Giselle is going on to start an Airbnb listing with her partner and going on to become a nail technician herself. And there really doesn't seem to be a limit to what we can accomplish if we stay committed and passionate about what we care about. That's all we have to report this week on Project North. Thanks for watching. Oh, sorry, you caught me looking for a geocache. There are many ways to bring together a community in these trying times. A Hidden Worlds did just that. When instead of looking for a geocache this week, they decided to create one. Let's see what they got. I'm your host, Tyler Garten, and welcome back to another episode of Hidden Worlds. Today, we're gonna to be creating a cache rather than finding a cache. We're gonna be doing it on the Conestoga campus as it is entirely based around Conestoga Connected. Let's go. Okay, so right now we're at my car and we're just gonna put my name on the logbook as everyone who finds the cache should put their name on the logbook. And now we are going to fold up the paper and put it in to our geocache container. What we're putting in the cache, which is a Conestoga lanyard, and we are going to put it in the cache along with the logbook. Just like that, we have our geocache. Okay, so we are presently walking over to where we are gonna be leaving the cache. The instructions say to start off by coming to parking lot 13 at Conestoga. All of the instructions were written by me and can be found on geocaching.com. We have found the spot where I'm going to be putting the cache, which is right here. I'm going to just put it up in this tree, right about here. And that's been today's episode of Hidden Worlds. Rather than finding a cache, we created one all based around our show, Conestoga Connected. Back to you, Cam. As always, thanks for tuning in to season 13 of Conestoga Connected. From the entire team over here, we appreciate it more than you could ever know. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm, of course, your host, Cam McKenzie. Stay safe and have a great night.